guys, it's Inka. So my friend Annie and I love food illusions. I've tested it myself before and it was just such a fascinating process. But what really intrigues me is the idea of taking one food and transforming it into a completely different food. In this video, I'm gonna try and make a bunch of bananas with steamed buns. This bakery in China went viral for transforming steam buns into flowers, into shrimps, even like a massive durian. Since then, a lot of people have done their own versions of this banana steamed bun. Food52 also did it, but today I'm gonna try and make my own version. Sounds bananas. Hi, Annie. Hi. Remember when we were in Taiwan and then you won me all those like banana toys the claw machine. That was probably the best part of our Taiwan trip. I'll be making this, but you're setting the rules. The rules for the banana. The banana must be peelable. The okay. banana must taste like banana. And I would like the banana to have a very fluffy texture. Got it. Do you actually think I'll be able to do it? I think you will be able to do it. It's just that there's so many components. I just think it'll be time intensive, but I have put all my trust in you. Yikes. <laughs> So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna pretty much break it down into four different parts. First, I'm gonna make the steam bun dough, which is the core part of this recipe. And then I'm going to work on making the banana meat, the whiter part of the banana. And then I will move on to the banana exterior, the banana peel. Finally, finishing touches. Make it look as realistic as I possibly can. Let's do it. I have made steamed buns before. I do make steamed buns on the regular. So I feel like this is the step that I should be the most confident in because I'm also trying to make it taste like banana. I will be weighing it down with banana puree. So I'm worried it's not gonna be as fluffy. So I'm just going to cut this up. I don't think it has to be too ripe. Hopefully it doesn't matter too much. I'm gonna go ahead and mash it with my fingers to get my puree. This I think will also help with this texture later on. So now it's like super creamy. Next I'm gonna add in some sugar. I also generally just put more sugar than usual in my steamed buns. So I'm gonna be pretty generous with this, I think. I'm also going to add in some instant yeast so I don't have to activate it before. Mix it together again. Consistency looks pretty good though, I would say. I'm actually going to run this banana puree through a sieve because right now it's a kind of chunky. There's still a little bit of banana bits in there, but I think that should be okay. So the reason I'm going with coconut oil is because adding coconut oil would help a little bit with the flavor as opposed to some other oil and just go in and knead it up. So at this point, usually I would form it into a dough by kneading it, but I think this time I'm gonna ask my stand mixer for help. Time to hear it because I'm ready to do some dough rolling, but here's what my dough looks like. It has formed. So I have this big guy over here. It is not completely smoothed out yet, as you can see but it's definitely getting there. So I'm going to gently knead this for a little bit. It is definitely a little tough to work with right now. Lots of gluten going on here. So I am going to just sit it here for a second and let it rest for five to 10 minutes and I'll be right back. All right, so the dough has been resting for a while. It is a little bit softer now. Now to start making the banana interior. I wanna half this because we're saving the other half for the banana peel. I'm gonna rest this one in here so then we can work on this peel later. What I love about steam buns is that it's so easy to work with. I feel like it's like a fairly forgiving dough. I have my eight pieces here now. I'm just trying to reshape them a little bit. This is the part that I'm nervous about because I know this is kind of time sensitive. You can't let them sit out for too long. I have to be careful not to make it too big. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up with a sweet potato instead of banana. I'm going to now just roll this out into a little shape. Looks like I just chewed off a bit of banana. <laughs> Double roll. So I'm gonna start rolling out my little banana bits here like little banana sausages. So that definitely took a while, but I have my three banana bits here. It really does look like banana chunks. In the videos, they make it look so easy, but it definitely takes some time. All right, so banana exterior. Now I have to turn this into this color. I found two different types of food coloring. The yellow and orange here come from plants, whereas for this one, 
comes from Goldenberry. Goldenberry has like a tartness to it, which I feel like could add to this. So this is kind of the color we're looking at. We're going to add it in here. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of milk. I'm worried that the powder will make the dough too dry and just squish it. This is a little tricky. Ideally, at least the entire dough becomes the same color, so. What is gonna happen if it's not the right color? I'm nervous. It's not mixing as well as I thought it would. I'm just getting streaks, so I think I'm going to have to get a little help from this. Oh my God, that's really bright yellow. I also think I'm gonna go back to my stand mixer and have it help me a little bit. So hold on while we try to fix this color. This is what I have from my stand mixer so far. I mean, I feel like it's closer now, but I really did not expect to be hung up on this. Oh, but on camera. I mean, okay, it looks a little bit more like a mango right now. It's looking good. Slightly more orangey. So what I'm gonna do now is divide it up into little sections. I'm going to just roll all of these in a long oblong shape. All my banana peel and skin is ready to go. And because I wanna make sure that this doesn't stick to the skin because we want it to be peelable, I'm gonna add some oil around my little banana. A little bit of oil right in the middle here. Not the sides because you want that to glue together. And here, my banana, I'm just going to pull the skin up kind of making this like a dumpling. Wow, here we have it. It's very chunky right now. We wanna smooth out the sides here. You know how for bananas, at the tip you have the pointy tip? So I wanna do the same for here. My first semi-banana. But right now I need to really rush and finish the rest of them. Just one more and I'll have a bunch. Whew, all right. Ta-da, here are my little bananas. I am pretty proud so far of what I have. Now I can go into finishing touches. You see how like because the banana has a lot of brown spots and brown streaks, I am going to imitate that by painting on these spots using matcha and cocoa. Also gonna give them little cocoa butts, which I'm gonna actually start doing first. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of the dough I had from earlier. Grab some cocoa. Try to make it look as brown as possible. This is what it looks like, ta-da. Get a little bit of milk and water to glue it on. Just push it. Here's my little butt. <laughs> all right, same thing with all the rest of these. Yay. Now for the best part, in my opinion, where we're gonna do some art. You know how bananas have these like, they obviously have this curve, but they also have more like defined lines. So I'm gonna try and do that here by pressing it down and giving it that like signature shape. It's so cute, it's so cute. So I'm gonna grab two brushes here. First off, a little bit of the green, the matcha, the brown, which is the cocoa. I'm going to go in and draw some lines. Bananas usually have little freckles, so I'm gonna try and do the same here. I am taking this so seriously right now. I want to say I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. So now all I got to do is finish up the rest and then I can bunch them together. So let me do that real quick. My bananas are done. That definitely took a longer time than expected. I am ready to now bunch them together. I am trying to now pull these together. I am ready to just push this in. It will hopefully stick together. Oh, okay, it's super fragile. But you'll see that I have my bananas here. I'm gonna transfer it to my steamer here. This is so funny. Look at this. Doesn't it look like I just put bananas in the steamer? What I'm gonna do is basically let it rest for a little bit. I will check on it in like 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Hoping for the best. I came this far, really don't wanna mess up. All right, the bananas have finished steaming. This is what I Look at these chunky boys. These are some chunky nanas. So happy about the color right now. And now before I show Annie, I just wanted to try and peel this. Oh, it does peel like a banana. Doesn't that look like a banana? The peelage is good. <laughs> I will say though that even though this one looks like a banana right now, 
When I show it to Annie, I want it to be the most perfect bunch of bananas together. I want to try and redo this again because it is a bit chunky for a banana. I can do this. It's just going to take some more time. Like I told Annie, it's going to be a while before I show this to her. Hopefully it will be worth it. Give me a few hours and I'll make the perfect bunch of bananas. Okay, I have my second batch here. It already looks a lot better than the first one. Ta-da! Looks a little bit more like plantains, actually. Color is a little browner. It looks like riper bananas than I would expect. The question of whether it's peelable. Again, here we go. Do people peel from this end or do you peel from this end? Oh, there we go. The yellow is clinging on for sure, but this cannot be done. No! So the verdict is, it is peelable, but it is not perfect. And I think it has to do with the fact that I forgot to put on a layer of oil, so. All right, Annie, here it is. I am nervous. <laughs> <gasps> They're so cute, oh my God. Texture, it is fluffy. I don't know if you can tell, but you can press down and it bounces back. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm gonna peel this off. Oh my God, so satisfying. All right, so here we go. It's peeling. Okay, I know this is not how, this is not how I normally peel a banana, okay? But I mean, it works, right? That's a peeled banana. Show the camera. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hold on, I feel like I need to do a banana for comparison. Why was that so violent? <laughs> Ta-da! But I'm gonna break off a little bit. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. There's two and a half bananas in my dough. I did try to like bump up the banana flavor. I feel like right now it tastes more coconutty. It's not as banana-y as like banana bread, but the texture is very nice. It's like fluffy steam buns. All right, Annie, what score do you give this? I give you 10 out of 10 bananas. Yay! I think you nailed it. I love them.